Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Center Sports Talk with the one and only Harry Chaz, your Scott Van Pelt lookalike. Today is Tuesday, June 2nd. It has been a while since we've been on. I hope everybody is doing well and safe. Everybody enjoyed their uh, Shavuot and the holiday weekend. It was such a beautiful weather. And we hope everybody was able to enjoy a little bit from all the craziness out there. Um, so here we are back, and there's some some new developments that have been coming out of the world of sports. Uh, NBA is going to go to a final vote on their opening of the season, which they hope to do at some point in July, uh, which would have 22 teams. Um, you know, you know, in a pseudo playoff, um, which means eight teams obviously would be out and their season would be over. Um, it's just, it's amazing when I was looking at the standings and seeing who these teams were. It's 14 out of 16 teams from the West would be in a pseudo play-in playoff game slash playoffs, um, which only nine um, from the East, which is just shows you how dominant the West is. It's just, it's crazy. Um, obviously the Knicks season would be over and, you know, they would have to, you know, play in uh, for another hope for next season. But, um, I'm hoping they vote this in and I hope that they're able to, you know, get the NBA season started. I, and, you know they're in that much better shape than the, than Major League Baseball, and Major League Baseball does not seem like they are able to get this together. Uh, I think they're just you know far apart between the players and the owners, and this is not a good look. It's just not a good look, and I'm hoping at some point they're able to figure it out, and soon because obviously the more time they you know they waste the less baseball is going to be played as it's just going to be very difficult for these, you know, to play games in the month of November, December. It's just going to, that's not baseball unless you're playing it in a neutral site, which I don't think is, you know, very possible. But uh, I, they got to come up to an agreement sooner than later. Like I said, I don't think this looks good on the players. Um, I know they want their money and I know they don't want the pay cut. But they got to be able to meet halfway with the owners and to hope to get baseball off the ground. Basketball seemed to have done it. It looks like the NHL has something in place as well. Baseball, it's, it's you're on deck. As they say in baseball, you're on deck. you got to get something done. So hopefully some good news to come out of this maybe on Thursday for basketball and we can start seeing the progression of uh, sports coming back uh, you know, slowly but surely. Um, today we have a special guest, Maddie uh, Vera from Sportball. Um, she'll talk to us about the importance of developing kids in, in the world of sports in an early age. Um, she's been a part of our center family for over 10 years doing programs from you know, different multi-sports. Um, she is an amazing person. The company is just an amazing. All her coaches are just amazing. Um, and are geared towards um, a confidence building in kids and you know it's you know especially for you know the ages of you know the early childhood age and up uh, so we're going to have her join on now she'll talk a little bit more about what she does and its importance uh, we don't know if she's on Maddie, are you there? If you are, let me know. Because I don't see you. You were on, and then I think you left. And we will wait for her to, you know, rejoin. Oh, you are here, but it's not allowing me. It's telling me you're unable to join. And I don't know what that means. I can't even ask you to come on. So if you can, if you saw when you first came on, request to join the live, that would be fantastic. And then everybody can hear your story about Sportball and how it grew and why it's so important in this day and age. 
but for some reason it's not allowing me up. Oh, here we go. Now it is. Let's see if you're there. It is connecting. Hey there. Hey, buddy. how are you? Hey there, Harry. How are you? Thanks for having me on, man. Um, How's everything going? We are hanging in there day by day and hoping you and your family are doing well during these uh, crazy times. Oh, man. I just heard you talking about the depressing news about sports, man. It's just terrible. You know, you can't even, like, you know, be entertained with sports on TV or anything. And, um, you know, it's it's uh, unfortunate. It's it's definitely rough, and um, you know there's some hopefully some good news could hopefully come out from the NBA. Hopefully by the end of this week, we we hope and pray that they do vote on it and that it goes through. Um, baseball is a little bit far away from what I'm from what we're seeing, but uh, everybody's taking their steps in the right direction. So we hope uh, it comes back soon. <laughs> so um, I want people, to, you know, not many people may know you know who you are and what sport ball is and you know for those who come to our programs and and for our friday and after school programs may get an understanding of what sport ball is but for those who don't tell us a little bit about sport ball and, and you know how it all began yeah my favorite subjects so you just have to cut me off when i've said too much right <laughs> no problem no problem so I so Sportball is a Canadian based uh firm uh they've been providing uh, sports programs for children for over 25 years now I think actually they're pushing 30 years now uh with non-competitive skills based sports programs was really kind of how they started now we do everything from you know non-competitive programs to league type programs mm -hmm. but that's how we started because um the uh basis was that children thrive when they are learning uh, multiple sports as opposed to one sport. Yeah. And uh, so now they're right now servicing more than 6,000 families in the Canadian market and way over that here in the U.S. We have uh, franchises in all over the country in California, Texas, Arizona, here in New York, internationally in Singapore. And so the programs are so well developed that, you know, um, they're they're international, really, if you think about it. The program is really based on, uh, again, non-competitive non skills-based and really introducing children at a very young age. We start programs, believe it or not, Harry, at 18 months old wow. with parent top programs. I once posted that as, a, as, an, as an ad for a coach, and a coach sent me back a, a message saying, you're ridiculous. How do you teach little kids 18 months old sports? You're just ridiculous. But the truth is... Muscle memory starts at a very young age. And, you know, children are learning more between the ages of zero and seven, eight than at any other times in their lives. So honestly, the, tr the truth is the best time to teach them anything, really, the foundation of anything is when they're really young. And so uh, as a sport ball franchisee and trainer of coaches, you know, we've learned how to really uh, – bring that kind of education to children and more importantly in a fun and engaging and non-competitive way so even like the shyest kid right. will be able to you know participate because we just do we just you know we're f funny coaches you know we're I always say we're um we're basically like clowns. We're big clowns, you know. <laughs> you know, we just try to do it in a really fun and engaging way, so that kids can feel comfortable and they can have fun learning sports. And uh, we basically trick them into doing everything that we want. Instead of dribbling a basketball, we, you know, make juice with them with a ball or you know, we we throw a pizza into an oven instead of you know doing jump shots. It's super fun. <laughs> you know, but that's what and that's what makes it great. And if anybody was able to ever, you know, come into the gym and watch it, you know, live, um, to see what it's like and to see the parents' reaction is 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 amazing because it's very difficult, obviously, to get an attention, you know, the attention span of, of you know kids of, of so young of an age to, um, you know, follow instructions and especially in the, in the sports world. Um, but when you touched upon it earlier, it's just being able to make it fun and exciting. And yes, you know, like you said, as an example, you know, instead of shooting a jumper, they're, they're throwing in the, they're throwing in pizza into the oven and then you're making it more engaging um, for the kids to want to play sports because, you know, as we know, as, as 
we get older and you play sports, it becomes more competitive. And a lot of the kids sort of lose the fun aspect um, of sports. And, you know, sometimes it has a negative effect because um, they don't feel, you know, confident enough to play because they may not have the same skill sets as others. Um, so what is, you know, what is the philosophy of sport ball when it comes to that? So uh, particularly for young ch children, we really try to keep the programs non-competitive. So, uh, you know, when we do a race in a gym, it's usually the coaches against the kids. Kids always win. <laughs> <laughs> kids always win. We really try to address like winning and losing in a uh, approachable way with children, right? Uh, oftentimes you'll go into a gym and a coach will deliberately miss a jump shot, you know, and pretend he's crying, oh, crying, you know, and, you know, and then we say, well, you know, don't cry. What, hey, boys and girls, why should we, why should we ask, you know, coach to do? Should he be crying? No way. You should try again, right? Mm -hmm. If he tries again, do you think he'll make it? And then, of course, so in those kind of ways, we try to just make it really, really approachable for kids so that they're not, um, you know, uh, intimidated by the winning. I mean, oh, you always have kids who are really highly competitive who if they just, if they don't win, they just fall apart completely. Yeah. And so we try to address that in a way that's, again, fun and engaging and non-competitive. When the, when the competition starts, it's really uh, usually, again, coaches against kids. And, you know, the coach always trips and falls and doesn't make it to the finish line or uh -huh. something, something <laughs> you know. But uh, the more important thing is that we try to address it in terms of, well, how do you think the coach is feeling now? You know, let's go give him a high five. Let's go tell him to try again. And, um, you know, it's very, very powerful for a young kid to see yeah. a coach making a mistake or a coach admitting that, you know, he, you know, sometimes he falls down, sometimes he makes mistakes. It's, it's super powerful. And um, in that way, the children get more comfortable with the idea of losing or get more comfortable with the idea of they don't have to win every time and that they should really be pushing for having fun and excelling. Mm -hmm. um, and Because, uh, you know, we play the same skills that everybody else plays. You know, if you play baseball, you have to learn how to throw a baseball or you have to mm -hmm. learn how to bat. If you play in basketball, you have to learn how to dribble. One of the other things, too, Harry, is that we really believe strongly that <laughs> um, instruction in multi-sport is super important at a young age. Uh, building all the muscle memory for many different skills. So that way children can kind of explore on their own right. what their strengths are. And uh, oftentimes I'll get parents who come into the gym and will ask me, you know, how is he at baseball? How is he at, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes you, you have kids who are naturals, right? I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes you get a kid who's like three, four years old and they'll throw a football and you'll be like, what the heck was that? Right. right? And um, so that's super fun to see. But most of the time, you know, kids are they're ambidextrous. They're th they're they're playing with their right and their left hand. And so it's such a great time yeah. to um, really nurture that and get them to grow at that young age. Uh, as they get older into, you know, the six year old, seven year old, eight year old, your first, second and third grade. Then we start doing more competitive types of programs. Mm -hmm. um, children who've gone through the foundation, do you know, who've gone through the foundation of sport ball and understand that it's about skills and it's about how good you get and it's about how dedicated you are. Usually by that time, you know, the kids are just doing so much better competitively because uh, the psychology of, you know, how they have to be ba playing sports, it comes much more naturally to them. So um, we do a lot of feeder programs where little kids go into other like league type programs. And right. every time, every time the coaches tell us the kids that come through sport ball, like you could tell the difference between those kids and, you know, kids who are just joining sports for the first time. As you know, lots of kids join sports for the first time when they're five, six, seven years old, and they're just lost. Right. They're completely lost and not. Uh, you know, so oftentimes get turned off to sports just because, you know, they were, weren't really given the opportunity to approach that in a non-competitive way. So what's great about what you mentioned earlier and, and being in a multi-sport is, like you said, it gives the kid a chance because, you know, some people may not want to sign up just for basketball or just for baseball or just for soccer because they feel that they may not be, um, you know, so equipped to do so or maybe, you know, they don't have the skill set or they think they don't have the skill set. And this gives the kid, you know, so much variation during this time to grow and to figure it out for themselves of which sport they may like. They may never have played soccer before, and now all of a sudden they get into, you know, they play a game of soccer, and they, hey, this is something I really like and enjoy. I want to pursue this even further. And to touch on another point, the, 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 you know, coaching is important. 
And whether it be a basketball coach, a baseball coach, or just, you know, coaching any type of sport, it's important in the, in the, what the philosophy is and what they're teaching and what their, their point is uh, to, to get across. And your coaches that you have are phenomenal. I mean, you see it on the kids' faces when they first walk into a room and they, you know, and, and, they, and they say the coach's name and they're, and they're running and they're chasing, you know, him or her. Um, it's, it's amazing to see. Um, what type of training goes into, you know, training the coaches to buy into the, philo to the philosophy because they have to buy into what, you know, the program that you're selling. So have, tell me, you know, what that, you know, is like. So, um, you know, we, first of all, we um, are really selective in um, the process of, uh, you know, picking sport ball specific coaches. Um, since a, a big part of our program uh, deals with uh, two, literally two to four year old Right. And um, then uh, the rest are it's still young kids, five to nine year olds. Um, we're first of all have to start really, really selective with um, uh, not just coaches who have um, some experience with physiology and kinesiology, but really coaches who enjoy coaching kids. Mm -hmm. Just because you're a good coach in general, a good athlete does not mean that you can be a good coach. That's the first thing. But then we do put our coaches through quite a rigorous training, I have to say. Yeah. Um, we have a whole entire um, uh, training. Uh, they start off with a minimum of a 25-hour training before they even get in front of kids. And then after that 25 hours of training, they uh, train with another coach uh, simultaneously, usually for a season, a minimum of a season, 12-week season, unless, you know, uh, for whatever reason, we have to push them out there sooner. And, um, and then that training continues throughout their coaching career at Sportball. We have um, a lanyard system where they get a lanyard. Uh, color for every level that they get to. And of course, you know, uh, uh, monetary uh, uh, incentives <laughs> for them to get to that. And it's almost like karate and getting a certain belt every time you get to a new level. I like exactly. that. That's exactly what it's like. I so like yeah, that. so we like to incentivize. We like to, you know, um, you know, really reward our good coaches. And um, I have to tell you, most of our good coaches leave because they get like, you know, jobs working in a, a public school or a private school like you know they just get uh, you know uh, jobs educating and yeah. stuff that we really don't want really to keep them from because that's really what we want them to do um, uh, and the rest of them stay with us very long term because they have a passion for teaching kids and you know love the amount of uh, training and support that we provide uh, we're really really specific in what we want our coaches to teach and how we want them to teach it right. uh, because uh, this is what I say to coaches I know that if you do it my way or you do it our way, the sport ball way, that you will be successful. Right. If you do it your way, you may be successful. You may not be successful. But I know for sure, 100%, <laughs> that if you do it this way, that you'll be successful. You'll be successful right. when you get them from kids. You'll be successful when the parents and educators see you teaching their kids. Um, and, uh, you know, as long as we get that buy-in from the coaches, uh, they are successful. And you've seen that because you've seen a, a number of coaches come through uh, – through the center um, for yes, football. Very much so. Very, and uh, mm -hmm. throughout the whole tenure that you've been, you know, with the center, I, I've seen, I've seen them, you know, come and go and uh, they're just amazing. And, and the end compilation that we do at the end of the season, um, whether it be, and, and most people don't know, you do dance and you, and, and, and other, you know, other aspects. Um, when we do the soccer or the baseball at the end of the, end of the season, the parents fill up those gyms and, and they see it and they see the kids faces and the reactions and the reaction towards the coaches. And, and, um, you know, you sign your kid up for a program, you're sending him out there. You don't necessarily see what's going on for the 10 weeks that they're there. But when you come for that last program, you see it all come together. It's amazing. And their, their, their love for, you know, the center or for sport ball in, in, in the, you know, in the partnership um, is great. And that's what it's really all about at the end of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so what, what skills, um, what, what do you think is important for the kids at a young age to be able to develop um, in any area of sports? What, what do you think is, uh, is the thing that they should be focusing on, whether they're five years old or eight years old, you know, during this time off and there's not a lot, of, you know, a lot of movement going on. Everybody's sitting in front of a computer screen, unfortunately, whether, you know, school and, and it's very hard and, you know, to keep the kids active. 
Um, what do you think they should be doing um, on the off chance they're able to go outside and you know do something? Yeah, well, first of all, they be, should be joining our classes on Zoom. That's what they should be doing. Yes, so, yes, 100%. <laughs> Um, Harry, I'll send you over that information. You know, we're offering a free class uh, once a week, so you know anybody can join in. And we're just Please. not adding more, uh, you know, paid classes as well as virtual camps. Uh, um, and as soon as we open up, um, we're hoping to uh, offer some backyard camps as well. So um, I'll send you over some information about that as well. Uh, but the, the main the main thing to focus on, I would have to say, of course, is gross motor skills because you know. Um, you're never going to go, you know, you need a gross motor skill for a any activity that you do, right? right. So jumping and climbing and um, you know, stretching and, um, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, just you, uh, kids can use that for anything that they do. Uh, when we do our um, uh, virtual sport ball class, our, uh, we spend a lot of time on strength building, uh, building core, building, you know, leg muscle, uh, mm -hmm. the stomach muscle, you know, just core, core uh uh, great uh, uh, gross motor skills. And so I want to say, you know, if you can, um, if you want some activities for your kids to do, you know, set up a few shoes across the floor and have them jump over those, you know, five or six times. Super fun and doesn't cost you anything. And, you know, your little one will be getting, you know, some cardio activity, you know, work on the jumping, um, even uh, some pillows, you know, uh, even tossing some pillows around. They can, you know, use their arms to do that. So any of those gross motor skills are super, super fun for kids to do. Um, uh, I invite you and your, uh, you know, everybody at the center to join in our um, our uh, our classes. And then, you know, it's super cool. Even virtually, when the kids see each other on the screen, it's so funny because I have all different size classes because, as you said, we do dance and gymnastics classes, all different kind of classes as well. Right. And when we get, like, one or two kids, the dynamics are just like if you get one or two kids in a, in a live class. It's so funny. <laughs> you get five or six kids, and they're all in, and everybody's doing it. And when you get two kids, if one's lethargic, then the other one kind of gets lethargic too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're – Super good at getting them active and playing, but um, uh, you know the 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 dynamics that you get when you have just one kid. So getting you know getting your friends in there too, if even if it's on a Zoom class with just a friend, right. and you know, doing you know let's have some fun doing some jumping jacks or let's have some fun doing karate kicks or you know whatever it is. All of that is super fun and uh, super engaging for kids. You know I feel really bad for kids now because uh, you know, pr prior to COVID. You couldn't get them off a phone. You couldn't get them out of the TV. <laughs> and now as we're approaching June and, you know, almost like 90 days into COVID, you know, yeah, it's hard to get them onto the screen. And I totally right. get that. But, you know, when they are on with us, I can promise that they're going to have a super fun and engaging class. No, it's important because, again, and somebody wrote it on there, that the, the social aspect also is just as, impo you know, as important, you know, especially when playing sports. That's a very key point too. And if you're able to do that with a friend on Zoom, or you know, obviously everybody would love to do it in person, right? And you know, hopefully that will happen sooner than later. But at least you're able to do it on Zoom and and to you know make it as fun as possible, is, and to get the social and the physical aspect of it is 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 amazing. And you guys do a fantastic job doing it. Um, and I and you know we will definitely share with our center you know family your classes um, because they are amazing. And for anybody who has not seen it, um, I, I implore you to you know get on there and see what they're about because uh, they are amazing. They're amazing. They're amazing. <laughs> I, I noticed that in the chat is uh, one of the founders of our sport ball program, uh, Marky G. So thanks for joining in, Mark. Uh, so um, yeah. Uh, what what are my Zoom classes called? They're called Scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, I, I just want to say, you know, on behalf of the center and, and everybody, we you know we say thank you for 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 all that you do and all that you have done for our kids at the center, uh, making all the the activities so fun and engaging, um, and everybody who has been you know. A part of it has only had, you know, tremendous things to say about you and your crew. Um, so we appreciate, you know, you and the whole entire family um, to please mm -hmm. send them my regards and, uh, 
you know, we hope to see you back in our center sooner than later and hopefully when everything goes back to normal and you'll be, you know, teaching, you know, our kids. And I would love to see the kids running around picking up those little mini balls and, you know, throwing them, you know, throwing them at each other. That's, you know, what I love to we see you, Jim. In, uh, in, uh, we have to dip them in sanitizer now before we do that. But that's yeah. cool. I can do that. We can do that. <laughs> uh, it would be, it'd be a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, uh, I appreciate all that you guys have done and, uh and hopefully we'll continue to do for with us at the center in a, in, a, in a beautiful partnership. Yeah, man. I miss the kids like crazy. I miss you guys. I'm looking forward to coming back, you know, um, and keeping our kids strong and um, engaged and, you know, helping our parents. I know they're going crazy right now. You know, if you have two little ones at home. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you do it. Honestly, my, my, my kids are big and I, I'm going crazy. So I can't imagine with two little ones, Harry, I don't know how you do it. You, you have three. Three at I have, home? I have three girls and one who's uh, graduating hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, I have one starting middle school and the other one starting first grade. And, you know, thank God they, they, they have been good. Uh, but I know they're definitely zoomed out. They don't like the Z word anymore. The, the Z word is not allowed to be used in this house anymore, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. a tremendous job to all the teachers who are out there and, and doing this because it's I know it's not easy as uh, – as a, you know, somebody who's had to be going on live and doing Zooms and trying to put out content as much as we can for, you know, for our, uh, for our members. It's definitely not easy, but we appreciate the love and we appreciate what everybody has been doing. So thank you for everything you have done. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Thank you for keeping me busy. That's for sure. Uh, always, <laughs> always. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get you, you know, back on this show sooner rather than later. Awesome. Send, send my regards to everybody, please. And stay awesome. safe and stay healthy. Nice chatting with you, Harry. I miss you, Thank man. You. I'll see you soon. Miss you too. <laughs> Be well. So that was Maddie from Sportball. Tremendous, tremendous person. Uh, she is amazing. I took the words right out of my mouth. She is an amazing person. Always uh, positive and always looking to, you know, just make the kids happy and to make sports fun for the kids, especially at a young age. And I think that's very important. Um, and she hit everything right on the nose as of, you know, the multi-sport aspect for them at that age is, is important. And for them to, you know, get an understanding of what sport they may like, uh, it could be tennis, soccer, baseball, basketball, hockey. There's so many things out there and, um, it gives them an avenue to, you know, figure out what they like. And then hopefully then, yes, they can, you know, you know, play that sport and, you know, and, and you know, focus on that one sport. But for a young age, it's good for them to be able to develop all those motor skills um, and just to have fun. Sports is supposed to be fun, even at an older age. And we, we know sometimes lose sight of that, yes, everybody wants to win. And, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, you're playing with your friends, whether it's a pickup game or even in the league with, you know, people you don't want to lose the fun aspect of, of the game, you know, because when it becomes too serious and too competitive, um, it's not fun anymore. And I think sometimes, you know, kids, even adults lose sight of that sometimes. So I guess that's my message for everybody out there. Um, so yeah, we have some fun and exciting things coming up in the month ahead. So definitely stay tuned. Um, Thursday we'll be live again with Yosef Smeki, another Hawks, uh, tr uh, travel basketball, uh, player who you know, will be talking all about basketball and definitely show you definitely don't want to miss. So definitely stay tuned. And we'll see if uh, the NBA uh, votes on this 22-team, you know, play-in, play-off, uh, and hopefully get some real sports out there. So, again, this is Harry Chaz with Center Sports Talk, the Scott Van Pelt lookalike, wishing everybody a terrific night. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you all Thursday night. Have a good night, guys.